Bonjour mes amis, hi guys, watches as investments, great topic, we love to collect more and more, more people get into the hobby, so there's less and less watches available, and at the same time, I'm guessing that already now, over 80% of the value of the uh, interesting watches is held by people who just want to speculate. Some clients of Hong Kong dealers just want the watches to stay in the dealer's vault after purchase. They don't even take delivery and they will be selling at a later stage without ever seeing the watch. And I don't think it's going to slow down. Production numbers of the really in-demand brands, the brands that really protect the equity, that have built up the brand equity, Rolex, Patek, they're never going to increase so much, especially on the steel models. Of course, now we're all about steel and everything. Maybe things are going to change. Obviously, uh, people with a greater means already invest into more expensive brands, the longer, the FP Jaune, and it's going to go on, trickle through the uh, independence. But the hobby has exploded. People just don't buy one. They want to collect. They want more. They're more interested into ticking all sorts of boxes in their collection. So I think that uh, this market has legs and uh, the, the supply demand factor is going to be important. Anyway, to try to put a bit all this into context, make some sense of it um, in this uh, discussion that we were just starting. You're going to put your comments down and uh, we'll see where we take it next. I want to compare watches with uh, with stocks, things that they have in common and things that they that they don't have in uh, in in common, the specificities of the uh, of the markets. Let's start with the intrinsic value for a stock is the value of the assets of the company minus the liabilities. It's something tangible. If you sold everything right now, what is the stock actually worth? In terms of watches, well, there you go. You've got the, the metal. You've got something there. It's not it's not zero. It's never going to be zero unless you lose it. Um, then the rest of the price is going to be a function of uh, supply and demand. You can have any theory you want about uh, the future earnings of the stocks and uh, the potential of uh, dividend uh, distribution. It's still going to be a question of supply and demand. If nobody buys the stock, it's not going to move uh, move higher. But stocks are valued this way. It's the potential of future earnings, which is why they trade over their intrins intrinsic value to make it uh, very simple. Now, watch is Let's forget about the retail price because retail price is just something that's set on high street at the the shop to uh, to pay for the distribution of the of the watch. The value of the watch starts with the, the metal, the man hours, the R&D, everything that goes into putting out the, the, the watch from the, the, the factory. After that, supply demand is going to push up the prices. The problem with price with watches is that it's a deliverable. You have something and if you're going to use it, if you're going to run it, or if you do, even if you don't run it, it still gonna, might need service after a while if the oil's dry. So you have to factor in services and if you're going to wear your investment factor in the damage of course you can still sell a, a watch that had damages you might hear my daughter in the back she's shouting they've tried to play your video games sorry about that uh yeah factoring the the damage if you're going to wear your precious investments which is why it's a bit of a drag for me i bought this watch it's mint i want to wear it but i'm also i also want to save it uh, although i don't think i'll ever i'll ever sell it and that's also a thing you know we think about the watches as, as investment. We think, oh, it's a good investment. But actually, you want to be the one owning it. Once you sell it, well, you realize the investment, but then you don't have the watch anymore and you've lost a lot of the, the pleasure here. Anyway, uh, things influencing uh, watches, trends, you know. And uh, watch brands are, as I said, Rolex Patek, very conscious about trends. It happened to Panerai. Everybody wanted it. The market was very segmented, many different references, limited editions. And then a couple of mishaps from the, the brand, Rolex taking over the the uh, the imagination of, uh, of people, releasing some great models. Uh, same with AWC. Uh, they lost uh, a lot of the market. And then uh, you don't want to find yourself with overcapacity which is going to drive down the prices so quickly and uh, and killing your, your brand equity. So that's why Rolex 
Yes, they have a new factory. No, it's not going to increase capacity. Capacity is limited by some third-party suppliers on the, met on the steel models. Yes, it's not all made in-house. Crown, hands, indices, even the polishing of the steel cases is still down out of Rolex. And that's why, for them, it's better to send precious metal watches because they make everything, pretty much everything, themselves. They can make as many as they want. They have their own uh, gold foundry. And... Um, and in a, in a way, it's, they, they know they don't want to put too many submariners on the market because they don't want to kill the, the market. And uh, it's good for you, but it, at the same time, it's bad when uh, everything becomes such a, so such so hyped that you can't find anything in, uh, in the shops anymore. Now, stocks are not immune either. They can be frauds, uh, accounting misrepresentations. Uh, stocks can go to zeros as well to zero as well uh, if they don't, you know, if the companies don't, don't, don't sell the, the, the product watches, you'll always have the, the watch at least, unless you, of course, lose it. Um, and market downturns, yeah, it can happen uh, with the watches, can happen with the, with the stocks. Right now, we are in a big, big boom and zero interest rates. Everybody tries to find other assets. That's why watches are interesting. And it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because it's, they're very much like the, the micro cap, the small cap stocks. If a fund starts investing in small caps, the fund in it by itself, if it grows, if everybody puts money into that, uh, into that fund, open-end fund, it has to invest into the, the same stocks that uh, have very few stocks in circulation and it moves itself, the price of the stocks. But when the big caps market falls, it's going to be very hard to sell. And it's going to be the same problem with watches. Once the cookie crumbles, that's it. You're stuck with the, with the watch. So you don't want to overpay. Be very careful. You hear a lot about value versus growth uh, in stocks. It's a bit the same with, uh, with the watches. Value, you know, you find value now into uh, GLC, some old models, some old IWCs. People are not looking at them. The growth stocks is like, is the Rolex, you know, you buy whatever Rolex, it goes up um, and it's just exponential right now because of, uh, of, of all the hype. Can it last? It's very similar to, to stocks. Now, let's look at the appreci appreciation potential of a, of a watch. You often hear, buy what you like. And I think that's very true. And what, we, what you should like is the brand the rarity of the model, the dial, buy the dial. There are many different of these. Some dials are clearly, the dial bezel combination clearly is better on some than others. Quality, you wanna buy the finest example you can get, pay a little bit more to get box papers and especially a watch in clean condition, more important than the papers in the box, especially with your older watches. But post 2000, you'd want to have the full set. Make sure that, look at the case back, feel everything, see how, how much it's been polished. Look at the quality of the, the class, make sure it's got the right bracelet, things like that. Style, some styles are very quickly outdated. Even the Gen 2 Vacheron Overseas, for example, yes, it's great value for money, but it looks very dated. And same with many bracelets from the, the 90s, you know. That 90s look ages very badly. Careful there. Uh, replacements, yeah, are, they, are there alternatives to them, you know? To me, there's no alternative to the Pepsi Rolex. Nobody does it quite like it. And then, the, um, and yeah, the, and, the, and also, also what I meant with replacements is, is the brand constantly changing, refining a little bit the model. Like the master control line of GLC, Every few years, they make it a bit nicer and it immediately makes the previous one look very dated, I find. And competition comes back to what I was saying. Is there something else in the market to take the market? Like the Zenit Chronomaster Sport takes a lot of the interest from the Daytona because they bring something new in a similar package. And condition, yeah, I mentioned condition, condition, condition. If you're going to buy... 
But sometimes, you know, all the, I mean, if it goes too crazy, like with the uh, Polyman Daytonas, they can be beat up. They're already pretty flimsy type of watches. I mean, very poor bracelets uh, at the times. Uh, manual wine, very small watch. Uh, but even in beat up condition, they reach, they fetch crazy sums. But that's on the extreme. But who knows? We might reach those extremes with anything made by the brand, including the Tudors, which are already at 7,000 for some of the big blocks, seven, 8,000 in great condition. That's a lot. You can buy a nice uh, entry-level sports Rolex for that price. Can they go to 20,000? Who knows? You know, Tudor is very interesting to analyze because it's the, the baby Rolex. It's the affordable Rolex, but used to have a lot of Rolex parts in them. Then uh, they became more of their own brand. But even today, they still make the baby Rolex. That duration. I don't know about you, but I have limited amount of funds. There are watches I'd love to collect. But how much money can I reasonably put into watches and how much time can I wait? Do I have to wait 20 years for this watch to uh, gain sufficient value to be worth selling? I'm not going to sell it, by the way. I love it. But I I'm just saying as an, as an example... I mean, right now, everybody goes crazy for investing in watches because, yeah, if you can get the Rolex at the AD, it's worth twice more, three times more for the Daytona uh, after. But that's not investing. It's an insult to people who've been in the hobby of collecting for 50 years, for 20 years, you know, who, who've been buying watches when nobody wanted them, who collected the uh, Hewer chronographs, uh, all the moon watches, for example. Um, now, it's a lot of young people in their 20s think they can make a flash flash money quick buck it's a timepiece gentleman type of channel you know the, the 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 style so back to duration yeah how much reasonably can you put into a serious collecting uh collection and then market depth is the most important supply demand right now there's an impression of rarity even on models that are made in the tens of thousands because of this self-fulfilling uh, prophecy that uh, watches are an investment. So they're never in the shop windows, but really, are they reaching the end customers? I see huge amounts of every model in every dealer's window. At some point, something has got to give. Dealers, I have to say though, they're not like you. Dealers can hold off for a long time. There's all, they always have things that, that move pretty quickly. And they can wait at 20 grand a Pepsi for, for two years if, if they have to and keep on buying them and storing them. They know if they reduce a little bit, they, they, they'll sell if they really need to, but they don't want to. It's like the property market in Hong Kong. It's held by a few billionaires. And although we've seen terrible events in, uh, in Hong Kong then, and then COVID ca came, still prices don't really go down all that much. They're still very near the peak. And the watches also just came down off a peak, but they're still very high. It's going to take a big shock, like a Lehman, to take down the whole stock market to really influence the, the watches. Now, taste, as I said, buy what you like, but be careful. What you like might be very different from the market. So do look at what the market is valuing, unless you really have a strong sense that you found something that other people have not found. Uh, now, I would hear users, investors, users, most of us watching this video, I think, and me and me myself, we want to use our watches. As I said, some people don't even want to see the watch they purchase from a dealer. They say, keep it in the, the safe. I'll tell you when to, when to sell it. And that's going to be a majority if watches keep on going the, the way it's going as a strong uh, asset uh, proposition. Now, we mentioned Panerai. You know, it was smart. There was many references. Uh, not huge production for, for each or not, not all of them. And they were making none of them perfect until they went to that uh, perfect 44 millimeter GMT sandwich dial. Uh, also one actually with the, with the chronograph is, uh, is available with the 6, the 12. I think that one brought it all in together. I think they call it the, the God model. And I have to say, I'm very interested in that one. It's very beautiful. I think it's the reference 277. I might be, might be wrong, maybe 275. Um, 
but but yeah, Panerai was very smart the way they they were doing that and did a few things not so smart. And maybe people just got tired of the the size of it. While Rolex chased after the big size, and then when they came up to the market, people were going back to the forty millimeters. Uh, it's amazing uh, the the whole Rolex thing. You know, we think they know, but they just react to the market just like any other brand and. They were not able to sell everything they were putting in the windows, uh, uh, even in the sports models at some time. And now they, they sell everything, but they still don't know where the market is going to be in three years. What we know is that there's a huge market in China, which now is fond of the same type of watches as the Western uh, markets. And I think Patek and Rolex could send everything in China and sell everything they, they make. Uh, yeah. I talked about a lot about Tudor. I think it's very interesting. Uh, the Tudor Prince Date Chronos, uh, the the one hundred series, seventy nine one hundred series, the big blocks with the sheer flanks, very close to the um, the current new Chrono and uh, the the Black Bay GMT, very very close to the Black Bay line. Those sheer flanks. I prefer the next version, seventy nine two hundred with the rounded cases. Uh, already there, there's many subdivisions. Um, yeah, you'll have the, the three references, the 80, the 70, the, uh, the 60, uh, referring to the, to the bezel, 60, the plastic uh, tachymeter, uh, black, 70 w- would be uh, a rotating GMT, which uh, I think is the most interesting. And then the, the 80 is going to be a fixed uh, steel uh, bezel. You're going to see pretty much at the end of the, the run, everything became tiger, but you have some... Transition references, non-Tiger. There's no Tiger in the dial. The Tiger is nice because it adds a red uh, dash on the white dial, but uh, not on the other ones. Uh, the non-Tiger, very interesting. Look uh, look out for those. I think those have even more potential. But the prices, as I said, are already very high. You're way beyond the intr- intrinsic value of the, the watches, and you get into Rolex territory. Uh, so you have stick dials, printed dials, uh, different be- bezels, different colors uh, for, for, for the dials. Very interesting there. Careful your taste versus the taste of the market. Market will always value what looks more like uh, uh, Rolex. And uh, some final thoughts. Uh, what's popular today is not what's going to be popular tomorrow. Remember that. We talked about Panerai, IWC. And what wasn't popular yesterday, like those uh, Paul Newman Daytonas that dealers wouldn't even put in the windows because they were ashamed of that garbage. Now they fetch hundreds of thousands of, of dollars. And I'll leave you on that thought because this is where you have to do your your homework. If you're really passionate about watches, you know, don't, don't be uh, one of those flash guys. Just look at what is really quality, what is really rare, which brand really has strong equity um, and uh, which style might carry through the decades, through all the, all the various trends. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments and uh, we can talk about it again in another video. Bye-bye, guys.